Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We are now going to talk about a very interesting topic that is genetic code. So till now we have covered two things. One is we saw how DNA replicates itself to create another copy of itself. Next, how DNA forms RNA by transcription. So these two things are covered. So now what we are left with is how RNA codes for proteins. So how proteins are being formed from RNA. Now in order to understand that first we have to talk about genetic code because genetic code plays a very important role before we get into translation. It is going to be extremely interesting. So first let us see what is genetic code. As we already mentioned that as per the central dogma of molecular biology, we are going to talk about DNA which gets, uh, which gets duplicated or replicated then gets converted to RNA that is messenger RNA and messenger RNA then directly codes for protein. So it results in protein synthesis. Now when you talk about the RNA, so DNA or RNA, now this portion is covered. So this was this was replication which is covered, this was transcription which is covered. So now we want to discuss how mRNA gets converted to protein. Now when we talk about mRNA, what is there in mRNA? mRNA is all made up of just the four nitrogenous bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine and uracil. Or if it is a DNA, then it will be a thymine. So the nucleic acids, that is the DNA and the RNA will be made up of any of these four bases, AGTC or AGCU, right? But when we talk about proteins, what are proteins made up of? Proteins on the other hand are made up of amino acids like proline, arginine, lysine, histidine. So, so many different amino acids. So a total of 20 amino acids form the varieties of proteins which we see. Whereas only four nitrogenous bases form a DNA or RNA, right? Now, what we want in translation, we want RNA to code for protein. Now, do you see any correlation between these bases and these amino acids? We actually don't see any relation between the bases and the amino acids. But that is what we have to do. We have to establish a relationship between these four bases and these 20 amino acids so that we can decide that which bases will give rise to which amino acid. Because if there is absolutely no relation between these two, then how will mRNA decide the sequence of amino, I mean, how will mRNA bases decide the sequence of amino acids in a protein? So how can they be linked? So this is what we are going to do here. We are going to establish a relationship between these four bases and these 20 amino acids and that is what is known as genetic code. So it is the set of DNA or RNA sequences that determine the amino acid sequences for protein synthesis. Now basically you would have noticed that while we were talking about replication of DNA, the concept, the underlying concept was just based on one fact and that was complementary base pairing. Since complementary base pairing existed, it was very easy to create a copy of DNA because you have one uh, strand with AGTC, you just create another strand with the complementary basis. Similar concept was there even for the for the transcription process. But when you talk about uh, the translation process, this complementary base pairing is not going to help us because protein is not made up of nitrogenous bases. Proteins are made up of amino acids. So that is what we have to do. So that is why we are first trying to understand the concept of genetic code and only then we will talk about translation. So to understand it even better that what are we trying to say when we say that we have to decode or we have to develop a mechanism where we can establish a relationship between the bases and the amino acids. Let us consider an example. Let us suppose on one hand you have all the numbers and how many numbers do you have? In fact, I am talking about the digits. I am not talking about numbers. So you just have 0 to 9. So these are the 10 digits which you have. If you talk about the alphabets, how many alphabets do we have? We have 26 alphabets, right? So let us suppose if 
somebody's name is uh, say say i take any name suppose if somebody's name is is john so if john is somebody's name and if i ask you to write this name in terms of numbers will you be able to write it so if i say write down john in the form of digits right like write john in a form format where you use numbers rather than alphabets you are not supposed to use alphabets but you have to write john in in the form of numbers where you write it like this 3216 1234 1, or something like that so will you be able to do this you will be able to do this only when you have a system which tells you that okay if this is the letter this is the alphabet then the corresponding a uh, number would be this now if you now other if any kind of system like that is not existing in that case you will not be able to write john in terms of numbers that is not possible because you do not know what is j in terms of a number whether one represents j or two represents j or three represents j you do not know but if you establish a system if you have a coding system which says that okay if any of the alphabets from a b or c if any of them exists that would mean number 1 so if you have any of the alphabets from d e f g out of any of these four if an alphabet exists that would mean number 2 if it is something like k i j then it would be number 3 or if it is say k l then it would be number 4 if it is m n it is going to be number 5 if it is going to be anything between o to s it is going to be number 6 for t and u it is going to be 7 again for v w it is going to be 8 for x y it is going to be 9 and for z it is going to be 0 so let us suppose we develop a system like this we we said that okay this is what will hold true if we want to convert anything which is written in the form of alphabets into a code which is written in the form of digits so in that case what do you think john will be in terms of numbers so if it is j j is here so j would mean 3 so instead of j you will write 3 then you have o so where is o o is here so where is o it is 6 so it will be 6 where is h uh this is h right so here you have h so that means this will again be 3 and again where do you have n so this is n so that is going to be 5 so now you can write john as 3635 now let us suppose if john is a password for somebody and you do not want to tell this to anybody so you can actually use this code if you write 3635 not everybody will be able to understand that 3635 means john only they will be able to understand who knows this coding mechanism so you have established a relationship between the alphabets and the numbers by making use of a coding system so which can actually decode from one system to another it is also similar to saying that uh, you have many different languages right for example we have so many different languages even inside india for example we have hindi we have bengali we have english we have uriya we have so many different languages right similarly you have so many different languages even outside india like you have english german french spanish and so many now if you want to translate a sentence from one language to other language you need to have a system you you need to know what is for example what is physics called in german in french or in english or in hindi or in bengali so you need to know what is it known as in all other languages only then you will be able to con i mean convert it in that language so in a very similar way in this case also a system was developed to establish a relationship between the amino acids and the nitrogenous bases thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors Thank you once again.